what in the world is going on? Kappa Corp looking to buy SPH. No, I didn't see that coming at all. And that's why if you look at today's news, the big headlines, Kappa Corp makes a 3.4 billion offer to take SPH private after its media business has been hived off. Now, no wonder they would like to move off their media business. Then on the right hand side, you see Kappa makes a surprising 2.2 billion bid to privatize SPH. So is it 3.4 billion or 2.2 billion? Later, I have full details for you. But before that, let's salute Mr. Umbridge together. Because you know, if you have been clowning him or if you have been thinking that you know, he's not done a good job, this is humbling pie that you and I need to eat. Because I caught SPH a value trap before. Now, after eating the humble pie, let's all watch what exactly are the details for it. And if this interests you, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Now, some very interesting findings for you. And let's first start on the value of some of SPH's assets. Because their assets do indeed have value. So let's pull up some numbers by analysts to give a perspective to things. The first one that I found actually to share with you is CIMB's research. What have they mentioned over there? The SPH REIT is the bulk of the value, correct? So SPH REIT is actually valued to them, their opinion, at $1.9 billion. And then there's also this UK PBSA, which is actually the student accommodation. This is at $1.4 billion. So if you sum up these two, it actually forms the bulk of SPH's value, correct? Now, sum of parts valuation is quite common, especially for a conglomerate, which owns assets that are not really entirely the same. So this is a standard formula to sum up the things. And this is actually also shown in UB Kahan's uh, approach to things. What do you realize? UB Kahan values SPH REIT at about $1.5 billion. And UK Student Dom at about $1.3 billion. Having put some numbers to things, let's try to understand this whole deal that's being offered to SPH shareholders. If we look at the title over here, Capital Corp is proposing by SPH through a privatization, which values SPH at $3.4 billion. And then, Kappa's share of the deal is about $2.2 billion. Share of the deal, take note of it. Later, I'll explain in details. Under the offer, SPH shareholders receive 66.8 cents, as well as a 0.596 Kappa read unit and 0.782 SPH read unit. Now, later, I'll draw a graph for you to understand things, so follow me along. So I've actually done the homework for you and went to dig up on Kappa's announcement itself. You realize that the offer consideration is, to be exact, 2.237 billion dollars and then the important part i'd like to highlight to you is the sph will distribute 45 percent of its stake in sph read and only retain 20 percent now i've also went to dig up on the holdings of sph on sph read you realize that if you sum up this two they do indeed own about 65 percent so it means that they keep 20 percent and 45 percent is distributed back to SPH shareholders. So that could explain why the total offer is $3.4 billion, but Kappa is only forking out $2.2 billion. That is because $1.2 billion worth is actually returned to SPH shareholder via SPH units of 45%, which also means, if I interpret it correctly with you, that 45% of SPH read is valued at $1.2 billion, which means the total value is $2.6 billion plus thereabouts. So understand the header now? So with that, let's move on. If we were to put it in a graph, this is how it looks like. You know, I follow NBA quite a bit on my own as a hobby. And NBA always has trades for players. Like the team I support, Golden State Warriors, they traded D'Angelo Russell for Andrew Wiggins and a draft pick. So Kappa Corp is actually trading 0.596 units of Kappa Reed and 66.8 cents in cash for 20% of SPH Reed, UK Dom and others. Now, my first question is why? Why do that? Why would Capital Corp want Paragon, supported by Westfield Marin and the Clementy Mall, in exchange giving up ORQ, MBFC, and of course, Ocean Financial Center? Would office reads certainly be worse than malls? I've been following Capital Corp a bit. I, I understand they have a vision, a 2030 vision. If we pull up their statement, they say that this is in line with the 2030 vision which is to participate in retail recovery of SPH REIT and also enter emerging purpose-built student accommodation, PBSA sector. I didn't know PBSA sector was a thing that fitted into the 2030 vision. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. If you know, leave in the comment sections. And then not only that, they mentioned that it's a consolidating the M1 and Gunting Lane data center assets. That is true, but let me highlight something also that I understand following these two companies quite a bit on this channel. So if you'd like to follow local ideas, smash on subscribe. I'll be launching more for you in the coming weeks. 
Back to the point on others, may I bring about the value of the portion of others? If we look at this UB Kahan one again, the one that I would like to highlight to you is this portion over here. Others, the bulk of value right now sits in iFast. iFast share coincidentally has shot up today. So SPH owns 15% of iFast and that in itself is worth about $300 million already. So what's the value of those two being named? So let's pull up again the summary chart that we've created together. This is where the value of things lie. UK DOM, $1.4 billion, thereabouts, correct? SPH read 20% of $2.6 billion is about $520 million. That leaves the others in this deal to be worth only $300 million, of which IFAS, the 50% stake of it, is already worth $300 million. That means to me, the M1 and data center assets don't actually have a lot of value or it's not really significant in this whole deal itself. So if you agree, smash on like button. If you disagree, smash on dislike. I'd like to find out more from you whether I've gotten the interpretation correct or not and whether this deal actually makes sense because I don't quite get the deal. So, so if you agree with me, smash the like button so I know you're in line with me. A last point I'll put out is actually this deal may or may not go through simply because SPH, the ownership of it is actually very fragmented. If you look at the top shareholders, you realize that it's actually being held very loosely. There's no majority stake owner in SPH itself. Capital Corp now coming to try to do a takeover, a hostile takeover, needs to get support from the various other shareholders for it to cross into the required threshold to get it completed. So again, leave your thoughts and comments in the sections below. Hopefully this presentation was of help. I'll see you in a future video. Take care and goodbye.